Hello everyone, my name is Dak Jones with Medical Claims Assistance and this is EPCR Hardware Roundup. We wanted to put together an informational buyer's guide specifically for EMS. In this video we're going to address common questions and concerns. Today we're going to talk about fully rugged versus consumer grade machines. We're going to compare tablets to convertibles, talk about specs, and even compare some specific machines. So if your department is making the jump from paper to electronic reporting or just replacing old units with new hardware, we want to use our industry experience to help you make the right choice for your agency. If it's got a chip in it and it's going on your ambulance, we got you covered. Key decision factors often include your hardware budget. What's your per unit and your total budget for new hardware? Your run volume. The higher the volume, the heavier the use. Your run types. Consumer grade machines may be more practical for non-emergency transports. And finally, your crew members' destructive tendencies. Do your crew members often break things? Consider paying a little more for a fully rugged unit to avoid the replacement cost of standard consumer grade machines. One of the first decisions you'll be facing is fully rugged or consumer grade machines. The EMS administration will often ask, do we really need a fully rugged machine? The answer to that question is almost always yes if your budget allows for it. These are not only PCs that you're walking around with, but need to be durable enough to keep up with emergency response. I'm not saying there aren't any exceptions. Consumer grade machines can be more practical for non-emergency units. There are also many great docking solutions out there that can make these machines more viable for EMS use. You could also take the popular gambler's approach, which is, oh, I can afford to break one or two of these and still come out ahead. We'll leave that up to you. Now we're going to talk about convertibles and tablets. What's the difference between a convertible and a tablet, and which one will best meet the needs for my agency? Convertibles are laptops with collapsible screens that can swivel or fold onto itself, converting it into a tablet. There are only a few drawbacks to a convertible over a tablet. One of them is price. They're usually more expensive than a tablet. They're also a little bit heavier and a little bulkier due to the keyboard. Now to talk about tablets. We're seeing a tablet revolution in the tech industry, and for good reason. Computing has never been so easy. But just because we love our tablets at home for social media, web browsing, and playing Angry Birds doesn't make them perfect for EMS. They're great for mobility, being the most pleasant device to carry around. But this is the question you need to ask yourself. How do my crew members feel about an on-screen keyboard? Most charting applications are pretty accommodating with this through the use of smart user interface elements, drop-down menus, and checklists reducing the amount of typing needed to validate a record. But there's one common problem area. Where do you do the most of your typing? Yes, the call narrative. Getting through one of these for a no treat, no transport call isn't too bad, but detailed documentation of a cardiac arrest event is another story. Moving on to the always confusing specifications. Your EPCR will have a minimum spec requirement, but if you're purchasing a machine that's been manufactured in the past three to four years, it's likely to meet or exceed that minimum requirement. For your processor, today's standard for processors are 4th generation Intel quad-core processors. They come in the flavor of i3, i5, or i7. These chips are fast, so don't worry much about this, although I would prefer the i5 for the extra boost in performance. Outside of video editing, the i7 will not provide a performance gain over the i5. Now for your RAM. Most modern machines include a standard 4GB of RAM, which is enough to do the job without any issues. But more RAM is never a bad thing. If you can get 6-8GB, to eight gigabytes, great. If you are considering a machine that has less than 4 gigabytes of RAM, like a refurbished unit, make sure to ask if it can be upgraded to 4 or higher. If not, I'd pass on that unit. Okay, so moving on to a very important specification here, the display type. First you have standard touch. It's legacy technology that allows only a single point of touch. This can be sufficient for electronic reporting, but can often make retrieving signatures cumbersome. The most common complaint with these legacy touchscreen is when patients, receiving facilities, personnel, and even crew members sign off on the PCR, resting their hands on the screen is recognized as a touch point. This causes an error in signing the digital chart. Next you have the digitizer. The digitizer is a great option. It uses a magnetic stylus for input. Fingertip touch will not be recognized. Preferred over standard touchscreens, digitizers are more precise than touchscreens and are the best at capturing natural handwriting. This is great if your EPCR supports digital custom documents. Next up, multi-touch. Multi-touch is the most modern technology. Uh, it supports multiple points of touch up to 10 for your 10 fingers. The difference here is that multi-touch screens are much more precise and they provide a better response. These screens still suffer from the signature problem. And finally, we have dual touch. It's the best of both worlds. The precision of the digitizer, the flexibility of the touch screen. 
These screens do not have the signature problem because when you lay your hand on the screen, if you're holding the pen, then it will recognize the pen as the point of input. Wrapping up specifications, to SSD or not to SSD? That's the question. Solid state drives, or SSDs, are hard drives with no moving parts as opposed to spinning platters in conventional hard drives. The benefits of an SSD over a spinning drive are huge, especially for EMS. SSDs provide faster boot times, as low as 5 seconds in some cases, quicker launching applications, and better multitasking. Simply put, an SSD makes day-to-day, -day, click to click tasks much faster. They're also resistant to shock, which is great for mobile use. An SSD should be high on your priority list. Now we're going to talk about some actual devices. First up, fully rugged convertibles and tablet PCs. The Panasonic CF19 fully rugged machine is the industry standard, the king of the EMS hill. It has proven durability and brand reputation, and it comes with an optional dual mode touchscreen. Now to list a few common complaints with the Panasonic CF19. One is the price. These machines come with a big price tag starting at $3,302. The screen size at 10.1 inches, the display can be a little small for comfort. Keep in mind that screen size issues can be subject to the EPCR application itself. This may not be an issue if your EPCR has large enough font, user interface controls, and scaling capabilities to compensate for the smaller display. We do prefer 11.5 to 12.5 inch displays, so we recommend requesting a demo unit to test your app on the display. The CF19 does not come standard with a solid state hard drive. The drive is upgradable to SSD, but at this price, where's the love Panasonic? And finally, we hear some complaints about the keyboard on this machine. The keyboard's a little small for users with large hands. Going up against the Panasonic is the GTAC V110. I'm really excited about these devices. GTAC's releasing some awesome equipment. This unit, the V110, addresses all of the issues with the Panasonic. It has a starting price of $2,200, tons of standard features including waterproof, backlit, full-size keyboard, 56% bigger than the CF19, an optional dual-mode touchscreen with digitizer, a larger display at 11.6 inches, and the best industry standard 5-year bumper-to-bumper warranty with accidental damage protection. The only negative I can find with the V110 and GTAC in general is name recognition. These guys aren't new though. Established in 1986 and going public in 2002, they've been around the block a few times. Now let's take a look at a pair of fully rugged tablets. First up, we'll look at the Toughpad FZ G1 from Panasonic. Released in the first quarter of 2013, this is a compelling machine for sure. With standard dual-mode touchscreen and digitizer, and a low price point compared to its big sister, the CF19, this machine is a good choice if you're shopping for a fully rugged tablet. A few notable pain points for the FZ G1 is the display, maybe a bit small at 10.1 inches. Again, this may be fine for your EPCR. We recommend trying your app on a demo unit before purchasing. If you're upgrading from the old CF19 and have been satisfied with the display size so far, then don't worry about it because the display is the same size. Next up, the GTAC F110. GTAC comes in strong in the fully rugged tablet market as well with this stellar machine. Pairing it with that industry best bumper to bumper warranty and a comfortable display size at 11.6 inches, that should be great no matter the application. Now I realize I may be sounding a little biased towards GTAC, but hey, I'm calling it how I see it. Now it's time to look at a few popular consumer grade convertibles. If your budget doesn't allow for fully rugged devices, we've got some great options for you here. Before we move on, we want to point out that all of these machines come with standard solid-state hard drives and tend to feel a little better in the hand, something often sacrificed for rugged devices. First up, the Dell XPS 12. We have one of these machines here in the office at MCA for demos. It has a very interesting easel-style design. It's sturdier than it looks with an aluminum chassis and carbon fiber casing. It's sleek, lightweight, packs a ton of standard features, and has a comfy 12.5-inch display. Also a low starting price of $999. Some negatives about the Dell. There's no options for a digitizer or dual touch screen. Another problem is its glossy display making direct sunlight usage difficult. Now we're going to talk about the ThinkPad Yoga from Lenovo. We have a few clients using these and have been satisfied so far. They have a versatile flip design that allow for the machine to be used in many different positions. Dual touch is an additional option here and the Yoga has an enticing price tag starting at $900. We do worry a bit about the keyboard being exposed on the bottom of the unit while in tablet mode. It is disabled at this time, so there's no worry about accidentally punching keys, but the concern is damaging the keyboard by setting it down on a rough surface. Rounding off the consumer-grade convertibles is a machine that's in a class of its own, the Samsung ATIV Smart PC Pro 700T. Like its name, there's a lot going on here. Is it a tablet? Is it a convertible? Both or none of the above. 
Either way, this machine combines the benefits of both worlds into one. Putting it all together with an impressive list of features, including dual touch and an i5 processor, versus the base i3 in the Dell and the Lenovo. All this is in a nice little package with a generous 11.6 inch display. The Samsung is a bit more expensive than the other two, and you'll have to deal with the glossy screen here as well, but we hope that you can avoid the call from a crew member saying that they lost the other half of their computer. We hope that that gives you some things to think about when it comes to consumer grade convertible machines. There is another category here, the consumer grade tablet. This is a very crowded space with tons of options to sift through. We don't have any specific recommendations, but we do have some suggestions. Because there are only a few applications out there that work on iOS, odds are your app needs a Windows machine. Make sure that the tablets you're considering are Windows 8 Pro and not Windows RT. RT is the mobile operating system and will not run standard Windows applications. RT machines are usually much cheaper because they don't require very powerful hardware, so don't be fooled by this. Number two, refer to the discussion about specs and the pros and cons of the devices that we covered to determine which tablet is right for your agency. Look for 10.5 inches and up models, uh, equipped with dual touch displays, four gigabytes or more of RAM, and the Intel i5 chipset. You can find my contact info in the description below. We're also including links to MCA and all the products we've discussed today. We hope this video has been helpful, so please like, comment, subscribe, and share. We plan on releasing more videos in the future, so please check back with us for more content. Thanks for watching.